All right, that made quick work of that. You can see the router planer marks. So now we're gonna have to hit that with some 80 grit on the belt sander. Take that down that last little bit just to smooth things out. This looks pretty good, nice and solid. This looks good. When I sand it, I'll fill those holes with some sawdust, so that's fine. And then this one here, we'll vacuum that out and, and then we'll fill that as well. I think underneath, it's actually okay. Now oh, there's a little bit. There's a little bit of a hole in that knot, but that's it. So that should be fine. So we'll sand it down. The next step in the coffee table base is to get the die on this, but I gotta sand it down first. So I'm gonna get to sanding that. All right, I just washed that off with some mineral spirits, which actually also works pretty well. Um, not the same as water, but sometimes I find it'll lift those grains too. And actually it's come out pretty smooth. So that's good, good news. So we're gonna let that dry and then we're gonna hit it with the dye. feel the, the hairs standing up from the water in the dye. Now I could leave those and it would actually turn out okay because of the epoxy. The epoxy is going to coat everything anyway. However, I just I wouldn't be happy if I did that. So we are going to knock it down with 220 one more time. And then we're gonna dye it again. All right. It looks very yellowy in spots. That's just the way the dye works. It's a brown Keta dye. Eh, I kind of missed a spot right here. But again, because this will be kind of hidden by the legs anyway, and because I'm going to be sanding and dying again. That's yeah, okay. So, this will get filled with wax. We'll be doing some wax fill in here as well. But otherwise, I think it looks great. Get some nice figure in here. And this is the shelf, it goes underneath the other part. That's the top that that shelf goes underneath. So I'm just letting that uh, dry right now. You can see there's still some that's a little bit down. And then I've got to take some alcohol and clean this epoxy off. That really helps to clean that epoxy off a little bit. We'll clean that and clean this here. So I need to give this another hour or so. Um, it feels pretty good. Just need to give that a little bit of time to complete drying. Once that's dry, Epoxy time. So I'm hoping to put a coat of uh, a seal coat of epoxy on this evening. That's the plan.
to use the brush just to daub it around to try to get rid of any of those trowel marks. This is a pretty thick coat though, so really shouldn't be trowel marks on it. Now we just look for bubbles. Just looking to see if I see any air bubbles form. It's so glassy that you kind of have to get down and look at it from this level just to see if you see anything. Not seeing any air bubbles. It is smooth as glass. Well, folks, there's the, the shelf. Shelf's looking good. <laughs> it's looking like glass. I can't wait to do the top. Once this cures for 24 hours, I can remove that from this room, bring in the other piece, sand it down with some 220 grit, wash it down with a little alcohol, and then flood coat pour that. Oh, it's going to be so much fun. I'm excited. I can't wait. Once that's done, then we put it on the legs, mount that sucker, and put it in the house. All right, the flood coat on the shelf for the coffee table is almost dry or, or cured. It's almost cured. And I'm going to show it to you. It's gorgeous. No bubbles. No bubbles that I could see in it, uh, no imperfections. It is perfect, it's beautiful. Still a little sticky. So I probably should have used some acetone and cleaned that off when it was still wet. But uh, I wanted to see how it would peel off. Normally on the plastic, it just peels right off. So I think if I let this cure for a few more hours, it should pull off a little easier. This is the squeegee I use, and I do the same thing. I, I let it harden, so it just comes right off. It's not sticky like it was on the trowel. A lot of times it'll just crack and come right off. So if you get a little bit of a hard spot, you just bend it back and forth, and then it'll usually just pop right off. And you only really need to make sure that there's nothing on there that's going to get off into your project when you start doing using the trowel again. But again, you just... You can pry it off. That piece right there was kind of stuck, but there it goes. All right, now we gotta clean this guy off. It's a little dusty from the shop. So we're gonna clean that dust off and I'll just wipe it off with the dry rag first and then I'll go ahead and hit it with some alcohol just to make sure it's fully clean, but I've gotta sand it. So dust it off, sand it off, hit it with some alcohol, and then we're ready to go. You might be looking at this thinking, why is he doing this? It's not, it looks perfect, but it's not. So 
not quite perfect. It would probably be fine for most people. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty good. It's not perfect though. And this is just a seal coat, and a seal coat, this is what it does. Now, that's a 220 here. Everything's been roughed up a little bit. We want to make sure that that flood coat bonds well. bubbles it's interesting the um, pattern that you see this kind of white wavy pattern I always worry about that when I see it um, it doesn't always go like that sometimes it does but um, I think it's just the epoxy itself sometimes it just seems to do that I do have a little bit of very tiny air bubbles, so I'm going to go ahead and hit it one more time. Okay, a quick work of that. Uh, just very carefully dyed the areas that I ground down and then very carefully put shellac over them and just rub the sides to make sure I didn't get any dye or shellac on the sides of the tabletop and I didn't so I think we're good it just needs to dry and then we can move it out of here and bring in the other piece What I had to do is set these guys up on this miter bench I'm building so that I could lay under them and drill up from the bottom as you saw in the time lapse. Um, the reason for that is that this epoxy, though it's had some time to cure, is still 
not in the fully cured state. It can take up to 30 days to do that. And I don't wanna, I don't wanna cause any damage to the surface of either of these. So I'm, I'm doing it the hard way. Now with these guys here, they're ready to go. I've got all my holes drilled. I've got a few screws done on either side. It's going to be tricky because I'm going to have to set the base in here and I can screw the base on once it's set, but <laughs> then I'm gonna have to take it off and dig it up to the house. And then I'm gonna have to take those to the house and that to the house and then put it all back together in the house laying on the floor. I do have a 90 degree drill head somewhere. And I thought about trying to use the 90 degree drill head, but I just decided to do it this way, the hard way. Sometimes we jar heads just gotta do things the hard way. All right, folks, there it is. Probably need to clean it off a little bit more. It's uh, just brought in from the shop, so you kind of get an idea. <sighs> there you go. That coffee table over there, which is maple that my mother bought about 40 years ago, is being replaced by this guy. That's okay, my, my daughter will get the other coffee table. It's been fun and I've learned a lot. Those number 12 screws are crap. I'm actually gonna have to take the top off and then pull those screws out and replace the screws that broke. I've got two that broke on this end and I can take those out and, and uh, put new screws in. I need to get a better source of quality screws. Those Home Depot screws just don't have the strength. They break at the, under the shoulder there or if you've got the, uh, they've got like a, three-eighths of an inch or half-inch section that's unthreaded and they break between the threads in that section right there. And those were drilled out deep enough for those inch and a quarter screws so they'll be within a quarter inch of the top but they will come through it. So there you go. It's, um, it, looks pretty, it looks pretty good. It, it matches the bar top pretty well. Um, um, you know, uh, I can see you can see the bow ties um, when you walk around. You've got that total live edge. So you've got the shelf underneath for some books or something. And then you can put whatever you want on top, put your doily, whatever. And, uh, and that matches the bar top really well. So if you've seen my bar top videos, uh, the same thing. And then the mantle will be done the same way as well as an entrance table with drawers underneath it. So, I don't know folks, but that guy right there is gorgeous. I'm so excited, I, I've been working on this. It started, I started it actually, well, I milled the log up about 20, 2018, I think. Um, so almost four years ago, I milled the log up, dried those pieces for over a year, uh, did a little solar kiln, Really a makeshift solar kiln slash greenhouse that I uh, went ahead and and dry, finished the drying off in and then they were in my shop for quite a long time, planed them down, did the epoxy work, then we moved. It took a while before I got my shop built again so I could go into the new shop and, and put that together. And uh, I'm so glad I did. This, this thing is gorgeous. Um, it took a while but uh, uh it's it's awesome that's a uh, stone coat countertops heat resistant extra hard epoxy now it does take up to a month to fully cure uh, these have had about a week to cure now uh, so they're you know they're looking pretty good and 
you can see the the metal flake grain patterns that it, it does the pattern itself you can't draw that pattern out it's a natural pattern uh, the front here was dammed up with Tyvek tape and poured and I had a big mess afterwards I had a bunch of leakage I poured it three times a little bit at a time and then had to work that edge with the 40 grit grinder so that I could get the natural edge in the epoxy and uh, the rest of this is all natural live edge sanded down uh, in the videos that I did previously you would have seen the work I did to, to round the corners on the shelf so that they came into the legs the way they do so I think it worked out really neat you can see that the shape of the shelf almost matches the shape of the top that's from the same log so came basically from the same log and you can see down here the same idea it comes out matches this bump out a little bit right here I did carve that and make it a little shallower and not quite as sharp and then carve that around on both sides same thing on both sides you still got the live edge from the tree branches that were growing out here and there rounded off nice and smooth and with the epoxy these are really smooth so feel really good and uh, what's really kind of cool is you can actually see into this check that's all clear in here so it's black on top and it rolls over but that was an accident actually didn't realize that it hadn't gone all the way through and then of course you've got this section here from the branches and one over there it kind of bumps around and you get the ghost shape so that's the tail of the ghost here and then the arms of the ghost and the head up above there's actually another piece that uh one of my sister's friends has that is uh, an, a better image of a ghost but this one's beautiful gorgeous grain got the epoxy deep fill in it with the black and metal flake and of course we got the bow ties down here you can kind of see those bow ties holding that together and there's one on that end holding that end together i'm so happy with that you can't beat it and when you add a little fireplace in we'll turn some lights down see what it looks like then yeah a little dark but beautiful we love it it's awesome that's the way that's a coffee table that's a centerpiece right there all right folks time for the old jarhead to get on and do other things thanks for watching the old jarhead out